So good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the last uh, afternoon of this great workshop organized by uh, Universidade Federal Fluminense. Uh, it's always a great pleasure for me to introduce our next speaker, Professor Gustavo Ponce. Uh, he's a full professor in the University of California, Santa Barbara, UCSB. Uh, Gustavo is one of the main researchers in the field of nonlinear dispersive equations. He has published more than 120 papers on internationally prestigious journals uh, with more than 6,000 citations. Uh, Gustavo has eight former PhD students and four postdoc supervisions. Uh, Gustavo already uh, visited Brazil many times and has a strong collaboration with our students and researchers. In particular, I had the pleasure to work with Gustavo just after I finished my PhD as a postdoc in CSB, and I learned a lot uh, under his guidance and encouragement. So today, Gustavo will talk about a unique continuation for some dispersive, nonlinear dispersive models. Thank you, Gustavo. Well, thank you for the introduction. Luis Gustavo, I mean, it's a pleasure to be part of this workshop. And I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation, both the organizing committee and the scientific committee. And since I'm one of the last speakers, not the last one, but previous to last, I would like to, in name of all the speaker, to thank again the organizer for this very nice conference. Okay, Has, it's going to, be clear, we are going to be talking about nonlinear dispersive equation, and we will be mainly concerned in two natural questions, very simple questions. We are interested in the unique continuations, and for unique continuations, is these time evolutions, we ask two questions. One that is local, one is asymptotic at infinity. The local one is the very natural one is if we have two solutions of the equation that agree in an open set, space and time, do they agree in the whole domain? This is the first question that we would like to answer. And the second question that is the unique continuation at infinity is roughly the following. If we have two solutions such that at two different times, they are very close, that means that the different in some kind of norm, weight and norm, right, is finite. Do they, can we conclude that they are equal in the whole domain? These are the two questions that we want to answer. And in my opinion, they are very natural, but we will say that several times we cannot answer that question. We can only give partial answer when we assume that the second solution is zero. Then in what we are saying, for example, the question two is, if this solution is zero, we are asking if the solution is a small at two different times, they have to be zero, okay? Then it's a little bit weaker, but in many cases, it's only known when the second solution is zero. Okay, and we are going to concentrate in several models. The first one is the KDV that is not really part of our business today, but is a good introduction. And after that, we will go to the benjamin Ono equation, the intermediate long wave equation, the kamasa hole equation, and other non-local models. Then you will be disappointed, but it looked like all the first four models that we mentioned here are one-dimensional, right? We will see that we can solve some problems that are in higher dimensions, and we will touch that. Okay. And these models, besides the KDV, I mean, the KDV, the Benjamin or the intermediate long ways, and the Kamasa Hall, all are integrable systems. They can be solved explicitly using the inverse scattering theory. And the last three models, the Benjamin Ono in the intermediate long way and the Kamasa Hall are not local. 
they involve a non-local operator. They involve a, in a singular integral, so the differential operator, a convolution, something that is non-local. Okay, this, that's the reason why the talk has to have the non-local statement in the title. Okay, let's see that, let's go to the KDV when we have perfect answer of the first question. And this is so and Scheurer proved in 87, that is what, 30 plus years ago, that if you have two solution of the KDV, you can put the, any other power here. It doesn't have to be the KDV, it can be the modified KDV, you put the power two or any other power. Suppose that we have two solution of the KDV or the generalized KDV in a very general class. If they agree in an open set, they are equal. They prove that. They prove the result that we want for the KDV long time ago. And the asymptotic one, I think the first result was given by Ben Shan that proof in 92 that if we have two solution of the KDV that vanishes at two different times, let's say time equal to zero and time equal to one in a half a line, then they have to be zero. See, now we are talking about KDV. This is only KDV. This here, we don't, cannot take any other power that to be KDV, his result. And what he's saying is if we have a two different time, the solution is zero here and zero here, time one and time two, then it has to be zero. Okay, in this case, he need to assume that the second solution is zero because he's working with the KDV and using the inverse scattering theory. If you want to work with two different solutions, then you have to take the equation satisfied by the difference of the two solutions. And this the equation satisfied by the difference of the two solutions is not integrable, then this result doesn't apply. Okay, let's see that there is an advantage if the result is local. Suppose we have the KDV. Suppose that we are in the, that you are zero here. This is X, this is time. And what you would like to say is that you are, that you are zero in a horizontal line. If you can prove that you are zero in a horizontal line, then you will be zero. But since you are zero in this open set, you can assume that you are zero all the way here. And then work with this part, then you will see it's zero here. Then you will prove that in this side you are zero and then you go back and do the opposite side. Then you have two, you split your problem and you have related the fact that you are zero in an open set with the zero in a, all this domain. And this is not a loss of generality because you are local. You don't have this trick if your equation is not local. Okay, you cannot cut off in that way. But then in fact, if we go to the result of so on Scherer is they use what we expect to use is, okay, now, what is the what is the result that the children and so is based in how what is this estimate? I need help from you. Okay, it will come to, to me. Carleman, Carleman, Carleman estimate exactly. It's a Carleman estimate that they use in a very nice way right, to solve this problem. When you use Kahneman estimate, you truncate a lot of time. And if you are truncating something that is not local, you lose all, all the property that you want to have in a Kahneman estimate. Then therefore, there is an issue with the Kahneman estimate. With, I mean, uh, then if you are familiar with dispersive equation, you can see that 
anything that is proved by the KDV, everyone will immediately try to see if you can extend it for the Benjamin or not, because these two equations are related. They appear in water wave, they appear in, they have solid tone, they are integrable, they are all related. But this result, for a strange reason, was unknown for the Benjamin Ono equation for many years. Okay. Okay, then let's go back to see that there is a very strong result for the KDV. Yeah, this is it, the follow. If we are in the KDV, and you assume that your data have exponential decay, then for t different than zero, your solution is analytic in X. That means that this is a very strong result. And here you use inverse scattering. This result is unknown for any other powers. It's only work for the KDV. And of course, that once that you know that you are analytic, you cannot vanish, you cannot be flat. In an, in, in an interval, you have many properties that you can say, but that doesn't apply for the difference of two solutions. It applies for only one solution, right? Okay. And this is an the inverse scattering. This is an open question. And okay, if you, this is a kind of parabolic result. If you want to, if you are very picky, you will say, well, I only need the K for X positive if I want to go forward in time with T positive, and this is a result of Rinkin. Okay. okay. Then let's see what is known for the asymptotic case. Then we have the following. If we have two solutions, this is a result with Escariaza, Carlos Kenny, Luis Vega, very, uh, 2007. And if you have two solutions that are in this space and the different, at two different times, let's say tiny equal to zero and tiny equal to one belongs to L2 with this weight, X positive part of X to the power three half, then they have to be equal. Then this, uh, in no moment you are assuming that these two solutions are equal. They are assuming that they are very close to a two different time. Okay, then this, this extended the result of sand for any power because that have nothing to do with the, the KDV can take any power. And you are not assuming that you are zero. You are not assuming that U2 is zero either. Then if you are very, I mean, a naive approach will say, is that sharp? Okay, then this result is sharp, but first let's justify where the three half is coming from. The exponential of the X to the three half is coming because if you take the solution of the linear equation, and you know that the solution of it is convolution with the 80 function and the 80 function have decay exactly like X to the minus three half to the right, X positive. Then you can say first, then this is very simple now. I will take a dispersive problem. I will look what is the decay of the linear part. And then what I have to do is to translate this to the nonlinear problem. If you think in this way, then you have to think about against because the solution of the Schrodinger equation that is dispersive, right? Doesn't decay. Then you don't have a rest. This will not give you anything for the Schrodinger equation that is one of the most important models. Then decay like this will not, it's not general. It's only for this case that work. Okay, is three half sharp? Then we answer that question with Felipe Linares and Pedri Sasa. And we prove that if you have a solution that the star decaying like three half, then it will decay like three half, but it cannot decay by three half forever because it decay for three, like X to the three half at two different times with this constant very large, it will be zero. This constant deteriorate, the constant here that gives you the decay, it deteriorate and immediately at time one is this is, an estimate that you can have. At time one, you are already very close to one. Then you cannot say that this constant at, two, at time one and at time zero is large, okay? This constant deteriorates. Then this gives you a result and tell you that the result, if you take time equal to zero and time equal to one is the best possible. But you can ask the question, if you are very, I mean, 
Let's say, Piki, you can ask the question, what happens if you take the time very large? You take time equal to zero and time arbitrarily large. What should be the result? Then the result, in my opinion, should be that these three half should be one plus epsilon. Because you have something called the resolution conjecture is that all the solutions, right, they should behave like superposition of traveling way or solid tone if you are integrable. And the solid tone, they don't decay with power three half, they decay with power one. Okay, then if you, you can prove a theorem like this with this power smaller, if you take times very large, it will be a very nice result. Okay, let's stop about KDV. This is all that we want to say. Let's go to the, the Benjamino equation. Okay, the Benjamino equation is exactly like the KDV, except that instead of having three derivatives, you have two derivatives composed with the Hilbert transform. Okay, the composition with the Hilbert transform is exactly that is a Fourier multiplier that is equal to the sign. Then, so you, then this gives you some dispersion that is of order two instead of order three like the KDV. The Benjamin Nono was discovered by Benjamin and Nono as when they studied propagation of internal wave and was later proved to be completely integrable. Then in some sense, it followed the KDV. First, it was deduced as a, as a model for propagation of wave and later was proved to be integrable. Okay. Then the KDV has been studied by many people and it has been improved what is the best S that you can take local world positive. We are not going to go into there, right? You have this nice collection of names here. Okay, but we want to see what is the best asymptotic result that you can have. Okay, and then you take HS is that you have S derivatives and R means that you decay with this weight in L2. And if you put a dot means that the, the mean value is zero. I mean that the, if you want the Fourier transform vanishes at zero. Okay, if you study well postness here, you will have the following decay result. That is a unique continuation result if you consider the second solution to be zero. If your second solution is zero, this is a unique continuation result. It says the following, I'm not going to read all this, but it says the following. If you start with decay R that is less than five half and you have enough regularity, then the flow of solution preserve that. If you start, you want to get to five half decay, then you need that the mean value has to be zero. If you go between five half and seven half and you have mean value zero, then it's okay, the solution flow preserve this class. And now if you want to reach seven half and you reach seven half at three times is because you are zero. That means that the solution at three times cannot decay, cannot be in L2 with this way seven half. Can, but it can be in two times. Then the problem is that, that we will study this in two, two times. It, it's from here because you need three times to have the result. Two times will not do it if you want to get seven half. Remember that we are assuming that the second solution here is zero. This result, the part that is in red, it was proved by Rafael Giorgio. Right, the extension to fraction and to see that you can, the three time is not sharp. It was given by Germán Fonseca, Linares, Felipe, and myself. Okay, then any result that has to do with two solutions, not, you are not assuming that U2 is zero, is an open question. Okay. And any result that is at two times, for example, can you prove that if, if the solution of the Benjamin Ono question is have compact support at two times, then have to be zero. That is an open question. Resolve of this source with very strong assumption at two times is open. And resolve for two different solutions is open. Okay, this take care of the asymptotic.
in an incomplete way because we are assuming that U2 has to be zero. Let's see what happened locally. And this is a result that we proved last year with Carlos Kenny and Luis Vega is the following. And this is equivalent, exactly equivalent of Jean Closo and Bruno Chevres result. If you have two solutions of the Benjamin Ono equation that they agree in an open set in space and time, then they have to be equal everywhere. Particular, if you have a solution of the Benjamin Ono equation that vanishes in an open set, you have to be zero. This is the equivalent of Sot and Scherer, and you will see why it took a lot more than 30 years to have this result once that the result of Sot and Scherer was known in 87. Okay. Okay. Then this also, the local result also apply to the inverse and to the initial value problem for the periodic boundary conditions. Okay. Is it's also have this, you can state that if you have, if you are in the periodic case and you consider the Benjamin Ono and that you vanishes in a, the two solutions agree in an open set, they are equal there. I mean, the local, since this is local, it makes sense in the periodic case, the asymptotic one doesn't make case. In there. Okay, I think that then let's, let's not go to the proof yet. We are going to be very, I mean, we are going to go technical very, in, very little, we don't want to have technical, it's Friday afternoon, right? Then let's take the next equation. Is the intermediate long way? I mean, what is the intermediate long way equation? Is this one. First derivative is in T, one dimensional in space and time. The nonlinearity is like the KDV and the Benjamin Ono, but now you have this term, and now you have this multiplier, L sub delta, where L sub delta is the operator defined this way. Convolution with the cotangent principal value, and then you have this parameter delta that I will explain you in a moment why do you care about that. Then when you compose the first derivatives with this operator, you have a Fourier multiplier, and when the symbol is exactly this one. And then you're going to ask who, from where this equation is coming from? Right, that's a very natural question. I mean, why something so complicated appear? Well, it appear in the propagation of wave because this parameter delta give you the following result that is a result of Abdelah, Bona, Fel, Felon, and so. They prove that when delta goes to infinity, the solution goes to the Benjamin Ono equation. That means that you have infinite depth. And when delta goes to zero, you have a shallow water, you go to the KDV. I mean, this equation, when the parameter move delta moves to infinity, you go to Benjamin on equation, solution of this converges to the Benjamin on equation, when delta goes to zero, goes to the KDV. Then this delta has to do with the depth of the channel where the wave is propagating. Okay. Okay, then the, well, postness has been studied by Abdelah, Bona, Fellon, and so, and also by Molinet and Bento. And you have the result that is expected that if two solutions in an appropriate class agree in an open set, they have to be equal. Okay, how do we prove the, let's say, try to prove this for the Benjamin Ono equation? Then, this is the point. The proof is based in an argument that has nothing to do with evolution in time. Mm -hmm. Then it says totally stationary result. That's the reason maybe that people couldn't prove it before, or they were looking for Kahneman estimate that work. Then you don't go to Kahneman, you go to a stationary result. What is a stationary result is the following. If you remember what is the Hilbert transform, Let's go here. You take a function f defined here. You have his harmonic extension. Then you take the harmonic conjugate and you take b to go to zero. 
here, then u converges b of x zero is the Hilbert transform of this. Then you take f, you take the harmonic extension, you take the harmonic conjugate, you take the limit, you get this. Therefore, the boundary value of this analytic function is this one. Then, if you have a, an open set where the Hilbert transform and the function vanishes at the same time, you have to be zero. If f equal to Hilbert transform of f equal to zero on an open set here, in an open interval, then you will be able to reflect, to use the reflection principle and to have a contradiction because you are analytic and you manage in, an, in, a, in, a, in an interior, an accumulation, in a set that have an accumulation point in the interior. Okay, that is the proof. Then this is totally very well known in harmonic analysis. And if you use that, you have the proof. Then you can then you can do it more precise. You can, you have if you say that f is continuous and vanishes in an open set and the Hilbert transform two, then f has to be zero and the proof is exactly what we just say. Now you have continuity because f is in H S. The Hilbert transform preserves the H S. Then you have continuity of this that you need for the trash reflection principle and you have like this. Okay. No, there's an, an important point here is the following. What you are proving is this, if F vanishes and the Hilbert transform vanishes in an interval, then the derivatives of F vanishes. Then what you are saying is that F vanishes and the power one half of the Laplacian of F vanishes. Then you have this result in one dimension if f vanishes and the power one half of the Laplacian vanishes, then in an open set, then you are zero. We will see, we will go back to this later on. Okay, then the proof, once that you have the result is very simple. You take the difference of the equation satisfied by the difference of these two solution is this one. Then what do you have? That W is zero in an open set that this is zero, 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 then the Hilbert transform vanishes, then you have what you want. That's it, nothing else. How is the result for the intermediate long way? Well, now you don't have that you are analytic in the whole space. You have to use a little, a something a little bit different. What you have is that this combination of the derivatives of the initial data plus this operator applied to f with i here are the boundary values of this function that is analytic in this domain. And this, the delta appear all the times. But you have analyticity here. If you manage on the boundary, the same principle with true reflection principle apply. And you have the unique continuation. Okay, that take care of the Benjamin Ono. I think that we are in. Okay, now we go to the Kamasa Hall equation. The Kamasa Hall equation is can be written this way. I don't know if you should call it dispersive. Okay, but it's part of our business today. Um, it was first deduced by Fosteiner and Focus in a family of equations that have a lot of symmetry. And later was deduced by Kamasa Hall as a model in shallow water way. Then it received a lot of attention because it was proved later than was, it's also completely integrable. We have a Hamiltonian structure. And the most important thing, in my opinion, is that have solution that are picons. The traveling wave of the Kamasa hole have this form. Okay. You can write the Kamasa hold in this form. And then you can prove that this equation is well posed in the Sobol space S larger than three half, right? 
But if you have a lot of influence for Professor Tosio Cato, this result bother you. And that's my case. I, I mean, uh, it was postdoc of Professor Cato. And this is a, bother you because this beacon is exactly an example of a function that is not here. Then you are having well postness and you are missing the most important part that like is the solution, but this is what you cannot do anything about that. Okay, we will return to this, but well postness is in three half. And now you say, okay, what is the best unique continuation result at infinity? And this is a result with Simona, Michelev, and Sue that we proved in 2007 that say the following. If you have a, a data or time zero or time when it, any time this is back, you can solve backward and forward. If at times one, you have the UDK exponential, little o exponential of this, no, no constant here. You have the derivatives x capital O exponential with this alpha more than one half. And a later time you are little o, again, you are zero. In some sense, you are saying that you cannot decay at two times stronger than the picons. The picons decay exponential, but, those, but they are not little o of exponential, okay? They are capital O. Of course, then this is, this is optimal, except that in this class, you don't have the picons. Then we will repair that in a moment. Then you have the unique continuation, but you are assuming that one solution is zero. You are not having a unique continuation for two solutions. Your unique continuation here is assuming that U2 is zero, okay? And you have this result. You have this result at infinity, but you are assuming this. Then it's an open question if you can get any result with U1 and U2 being two solutions, okay? Okay, then this is the explanation that if you take this function here, this function is not even in three half, it's not even in any of these several spaces, right? Then you have you are in a bad shape because you need s larger than three half to have well postness. Then with Felipe Linares and Sideris, we prove some kind of well postness in this space. These are a space of H1 and Lipschitz function. Okay, what is the trick? Then that you are continuous in H1, but you are not continuous in the Lipschitz because this translation, the translation is not a continuous map in this space. Then you cannot have better than this. You cannot put here continuity, okay? You can put an infinity, but you don't have continuity. Translation are not a, of translation of this is not continuous in the Lipschitz norm. Okay, then now we can modify the previous result and, and have this that we want. Then we have that if you have a result in this class that decay more than exponential initially and a later time decay also more than exponential is because you are zero. And this is a nice result because that tells you that you cannot decay at two times faster than the traveling wave. This is false for the KDV as the result with Felipe and Pedro Isasa prove, right? Maybe asymptotically it's true for the KDV, but certainly it's not for two times. Okay, then what happened locally? This take care, this take care of the unique continuation at infinity. What happened locally? And this is a result that we proved with Felipe Linares last year, or maybe a little bit longer, is the following. If we have a solution of the Kamasa Hall equation given by the previous local result, and the solution vanishes in an open set, then it's zero. Here, you are not assuming that you have two solutions. You are assuming that you have only one solution. Then in this case, both 
the asymptotic at infinity unique continuation and the local one both assume that the U2 have to be zero. It's open question if you take two solutions. And this is very strange. This result was strange in the sense that there is almost infinitely many papers in the Kamasa whole, right? For example, there are several papers in the Kamasa whole that prove that you cannot have compact support at two different times. Of course, this is, these are weaker than this. You cannot have a stronger than exponential decay in one side. But this proof, it, it was, have no reference before. I don't know, I see people overlook at this. And what, then if you are in the Kamasa hall, this is what I say that is, is an open question if you have two solutions. You can also have the same result with Felipe Linares in the case of the periodic boundary condition for the Kamasa hall. In this case, the local existence is due to the Lelis, Capeller, and Topalov. And you have the same. If you have a solution of the initial value problem with periodic boundary conditions and you vanish in an open set, then you have to be zero. In this case, in the case that you have the periodic problem, there are other results by Brandoles and Cortez and Brandoles. And that, the, that result are different in the sense that they apply when the solution have, is global. But there are different results. They don't, they don't imply this. This doesn't imply that. OK, then we have now the unique continuation for the Kamasa hole in both ways, but only when U2 is 0. OK, then in fact, if you are very picky, you, you have uh, this family of equation when you put a beta parameter here and B, B parameter here. If B is equal to two, you have come as a whole. If B is equal to three, you have something called the, the, the Gasperi processing model it, that is also integrable. You have a family of this equation with the two extrema to be completely integrable. And the result that we have both apply for any beta between two and three. Okay, I'm not going to give you the proof. The proof is extremely simple. I mean, it's extremely simple. I'm not going to give you the proof. I want, since I have a few minutes, I will prefer to go to this last part. And the last part is the following. In, if you are in dispersive equation, and Gustavo can tell you that, and you want to go from the Benjamin Nono equation to the KDV, you don't use the intermediate long wave, you use this equation. Then you put the powers of the Laplacian with fractional alpha here, you have derivative here, and you say, well, if alpha is equal to two, then I get the KDV. If alpha is equal to one, I get the Benjamin Nono equation. If alpha is equal to zero, I get the implicit Burgett equation. If alpha is equal to minus one, I get this guy here. It will be the Hilbert transform, and this is called the Hilbert Burgess equation. Okay, then you just want to study this model, and this model is only integrable for one and two, right? But it makes sense to study this model and to ask the question for this model. Okay. Then of course, you are not going to have a result in this case when alpha is equal to zero, right? This equation is hyperbolic. You can have compact support. There is nothing wrong with that. It's a hyperbolic. Then the unique continuation that you want doesn't apply. Therefore, you have to have a result that alpha is not zero, okay? And this is a result that is that we got with this is a different paper, more recent, with Kenny, Didier Pilot, Luis Vega, and myself, and we proved the following. If you have two solutions of this generalized equation, and then you remove alpha equal to zero and alpha equal to one, then you don't have the case alpha, you cannot have the case alpha equal to zero, because that will be the, the hyperbolic case, the case alpha equal to one, let's say is the Benjamin Nono equation that we already know everything for that. Then the only thing that you are removing is the case zero here. If you have two solution of this, 
that they agree in an open set, they have to be equal. That means that you extend everything except for the hyperbolic case that is when alpha is equal to zero. Okay, how do you prove this? This is a question that Pilot asked in a, I mean, years ago when I was giving a talk and then we start to work together and we solve it, right? Then we solve it, but we solve it in a way that and since we were a month later, because a few weeks before we have this proof, the proof of the key art ingredient, we saw a paper by Gotch, Salo, and Gunter Ullman where they prove exactly what we need. It was the following. Suppose that alpha is a parameter between zero and two, and you have a function that is in a, any sobole space. And this vanishes in an open set, the function and this fractional derivative vanishes in an open set, then this function is zero. See, this is exactly what we say, we, we took the, if alpha is equal to one and the dimension is one, we know this because this has to do with the Hilbert transform. That's what we mentioned before, right? But here is any dimension that you want, any alpha that you want, except when, if alpha is equal to zero, this is local. When alpha is equal to two, this is local, right? Then how do you prove this? Well, the proof of this is the characterization of the fractional power of the Laplacian given by Caffarelli and Sylvester. The characterization is more or less the following. If you study the Laplacian, but you extend it in a new variable in this way, and this is your boundary value, then the power alpha of this is exactly this limit when you go to zero. Is this fractional derivatives on the boundary value, if you wish, when you go to zero. Okay. Then let me let me tell let me tell you something uh, that okay, then the proof, it was uh, the proof of Gosh, Salo, and Ullman is the proof that is very expected. There were plenty of people close to this result, but they were not looking exactly to that. That's a very strange that people in harmonic analysis have not seen this extension of the, of the result of the Hilbert transform using fractional power of the Laplacian. But then we got the following extension. And the, following, the extension is the following because I mean, it's not a big difference with the proof. It says the following. Suppose that you take two real parameters that the difference is not even, it's not an even number. If you take a function in any sort of space and these two powers of this, that is called the vessel potential of this, Function. Now this is not the power of the Laplacian, U1 minus the Laplacian, then you don't have any problem to define this for any real. If you put the Laplacian here, you have to be careful because you cannot be very negative. Okay, if two fractional powers of this operator vanishes and the difference of them is not an even number, right? Then F has to be C. The result is very close to what Gunther and Gunther and co-worker did, and the idea is to use Caffarelli Sylvester result. Once that you have this result, and this is the last one, I, I will make it, okay, is the following. You can prove unique continuation for this equation. Who is this equation? Well, it's a, it's a very general equation. Then this is derivatives in T. This operator is fractional powers of the Laplacian, if m is zero, it will not be the Laplacian, it will be the vessel potential, if you, right? If m is positive, this is a potential, this is a hatred integrant, this is a nonlinearity. Then it, this kind of equation appear in many instances. For, for example, when you have a stochastic process, when you have semi-relativity, you have several models when this appear. I mean, water wave, and then depend what you choose for W, what you choose for nonlinearity P, what you choose for potential. 
if n is zero, if n is more than zero, if alpha is this, but then you, when you have this, you have the unit continuation of that. Then you will have exactly the result that you want. You will have that if, if two solution of this equation agree in an open set and alpha satisfy that is no local, then they will be equal. Okay, I will stop here and sorry, it took one more minute that I was supposed to. Thank you for the nice talk. Uh, now we have uh, time for questions. Uh, any questions or comments? Oh. I, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks, Professor Ponzi, for this beautiful talk. Uh, my question is the first uh, results were for the do a domain, uh, for the domain R in R, one dimension. Is it true or any of those results on uh, unique continuation or U identically zero if it, U is zero in a subset? Is it true for dimensions higher than one? Or, okay, the, what the result, the result of this the beginning, one? Yes, uh -huh. this, for example. This is, this is true in any dimension. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I missed this. This is true in any dimension. And the Benjamin Ono and all these are the... Well, the problem is that the, 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 they have modeled that generalize the Benjamin Ono in higher dimension and the KDV in higher dimension, right? For example, for the KDV, you have the KP that is also integrable and generalize that. And you have, you are in two dimension, but you have propagation in one direction that is stronger than in the other. But then you have other operator that start to bother you to use unique continuation, right? Then for the rest, this result for the KP, I don't know, right? And there is some generalization for the Benjamin, no, no, but they are not completely integrable. Then, yes, in that case, I think that you can do that depend what kind of generalization you are considering. But it's not automatic that you can generalize the Benjamin, no, no, to higher dimension because I mean, it's, right? It depends how do you want the, the effect transversal to the main direction B. Does that answer your question, Liam? Yes, thanks. Yes. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay. Oh. Thank you very okay. much for oh. this interesting presentation. I have a question about the results uh, obtained here. You, you have assumed that omega, the small region, is uh, always an open set. Yes. My question, what happens if we assume just omega is... Uh, or set with, uh, for example, no negative measure? Okay, um, I mean, remember that you are free to choose the initial data, right? Then if, if, if you, for example, an, an interval will not make it because you put the data to have compact support, you have all the right to choose your data. Then you have, uh, you vanishes in a big, in a big set, right? Then you have to put a little bit more than than something that have measured zero, right? Then I don't know what is the minimum measure that you have to assume. I don't know that. But an interval will not, I mean, something that is totally in one condition that only take one, what happened in one time, it will not, it will not give you anything. Because you can, you can prescribe any initial data that you wish. Okay. Well, Gustavo, I, I have a question. Uh, if you compare your result that you have with uh, Carlos and Luis about uh, BO, right? Mm -hmm. If you, you compare this result with the old one uh, that saw proof for KDV, mm -hmm. what is the difference between the regularity of the solution? Is it the same? No, I think that so and Scherer, they need much less regularity. Mm -hmm. They need much less regularity. Uh, what we what we need is, I mean, I, I we didn't try to see what was the minimum regularity to apply that. And let's let's be totally honest. I mean, we say mm -hmm. okay, three, three halves, right? You put three halves, yeah. but you you are sure. 
but probably this, you can lower that. Yeah, but look here. If if this result, the result, this result contain the the one for the Benjamin on, right? Because mm -hmm. you put dimension one alpha equal to one half is uh, the result with uh, with with the Hilbert transform. Here you are assuming that HS is in any S you wish. Mm -hmm. You can extend that. I mean, I think that because the only thing that you need is that this that this is zero, right? As a distribution, not even that's not even a function. If you want uh, the extension, you can you can do. I mean, more, you can do regularity and prove this for a nice result and pass to the limit to test. And then how you translate this into the regularity of the Benjamino, no, I never saw about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I imagine that I'm sure that maybe the best result for the Benjamino, no, I think is uh, local system is UNESCO and Kenny in L2. Maybe mm -hmm. you can do it in L2, but then you have to be careful what, what do you mean for result? Uh, I mean, to be a solution in L2, it's a, you have to pass through the limit. I see. Okay. I see. And another question is, uh, what about the, if you consider another generalization of uh, KDV in higher dimension, like ZK, do you think you can also try to prove this kind of results instead of KP? Well, if, if what we wanted is to make things no local. Well, I, what I wanted. Let's say uh -huh. what I want is to make things no local. That then uh -huh. the I don't know many generalizations that are no local for the KDB, uh -huh. right? You can generalize the what is called the generalized K, dispersive KDB, and then, but I don't know much of these models. Okay, but I imagine that something that have that is fractional powers then you can be able to get to say something okay but if, if you want the kdv by itself then you ha have to live with calm and estimate okay thank you no, thank okay, you so let's try let's uh thank the speaker again and yeah some clap our hands right <laughs> okay thank you, thank you. Thank you.